In this lesson, we will talk about theoretical probabilities. So here is just some vocabulary, just so you understand as we're going through this lesson. An experiment is essentially a test where we don't know what the outcome will be. It doesn't need to be this crazy scientific experiment. It could be flipping a coin. Flipping a coin, we don't know if we'll get heads or tails. Drawing a card out of a deck, we don't know what value we will get. That's an experiment. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So using my flipping a coin, my sample space would be heads or tails. The event is a subset of the sample space, which means it belongs to one of the elements of the sample space, and it's usually denoted by a capital letter. So in this case, I would say an event could be that I got flipped a heads or flipped a tails. That would be the event. So theoretical probability means this is the probability that something should happen. So it's not necessarily what actually happens, it's what we are expecting to happen. And to find that probability, we're taking the number of, of elements in the event divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So for instance, if the sample space were heads and tails, that would be two items. And if the event is flipping heads, that was one of the two items. So the probability, theoretically, of flipping a heads is one half. And of course, the probability of flipping tails is one half. This is also very important. The probability um, is always between zero and one. If a probability of an event is zero, that means it is certainly not going to happen. It's impossible. And the probability is one means it certainly will happen. So for instance, I don't know if any of you have played Kino before, but if there are 80 Kino balls, numbered one through 80, and a ball is chosen at random, find the probability that the first ball chosen is even. So you might see it written like this, P even, which means the probability that it's even. Well, I know that the number of total Kino balls is 80, and I know that 40 of those balls would be even and 40 would be odd. So 40 over 80, which means one half. The probability that the value that I choose is in the 20s, meaning that it's 20 through 29. Out of the 80 balls, there are 10 that start with a 2. So 10 out of 80 would be 1 8. Again, remember, quite often we will write that as 0 0.5 and 0 0.125. Um, sometimes you will see them written as percents, so 50% or 12.5%, but most often the decimal form is the way that you will be asked to find those probabilities. Here is a question for you to try on your own, so try the question, then press play to check your work. So here a sock drawer has six black socks, four white socks, and two blue socks, so find the probability um, of choosing a black sock. So how many socks do we have total? We have 12 socks total, Six of them are black, which means half of them are black, and that's 0.5, so my probability is 0.5. I have four white socks out of 12. Four out of 12 is one over three. And then this, of course, is approximately 0.33. And then two blue socks would be two out of 12, which is one out of six and that's approximately 0.167. So if I add all of these together, and again, these two were rounded because they weren't exact answers, but if I add all of these together, notice that the total is one. What does that tell me? That tells me that I'm 100% sure that I'm going to get either a black or a white or a blue sock. Another thing about probability that I wanted to chat with you about was the opposite problem. So quite often we are asked to find something and it's easier to find the probability of it not happening and then subtracting from one because we know that the probability of the entire sample space is one. So in this question, for instance, we're asked to find the probability that the sum of the dice is not three. So it might be easier to find one minus the probability that the sum is equal to three. So how many equal to three? Well, that equals two. These two both equal three. That's a sum of four, of five, of six, etc. And none of the other ones add up to three. 
So instead of adding all of the rest of these, I would say this is one minus two out of 36 total options, which means it is 34 out of 36 options are not three. 34 out of 36, of course, reduces to 17 eighteenths. And then if they wanted us to, we could approximate that. So about 0.944. Typically, we do go to three decimal places, so 0.944 would be the probability that it is not a three. So again, I could have gone through and added all of the rest of these, but it's easier just to take one minus the probability that it is. Here are two questions for you to try. So press pause, try both questions, then press play to check your work. So to find the probability that the sum is nine, so P sum of nine, I have to find how many add up to nine. So this whole diagonal is eight. Looks like this whole diagonal, the sum of the digits is nine. So that means there are four out of 36 total options, which means one out of nine total options if I reduce. Now, the probability that it's not nine means one minus one ninth. So I already found the one ninth here, which means this is going to be eight ninths.